He said, the guy that owns the car didn't buy any gas because he didn't think you'd last this long. <laughs> First cup car? Yeah. That was, uh, I didn't know anything. I'm telling you, that's the one thing people do. I've watched Dale Jr.'s downcast and stuff, and I see all these guys that are involved in stock cars, and they had, you know, majority of them started when they were kids and followed it and were their parents or dads or whoever. And they had tons of background in it and understanding of it. And I came with zero knowledge, none. Never worked on a car, that just never worked on a car. Period. All I'd ever worked on was go kart. That's cool. And uh, so, <laughs> we did. We uh, Daryl Derringer was the guy that they had uh, meet me at the airport to come introduce me to stock car racing. I had to back up a little bit. I'm thinking professional racing after I ended the kart thing. So I'm immediately thinking open wheel. And so I start going to a bunch of open wheel events, looking to see if there's any way I can get in a big car. I went to an open wheel school and the instructors and people said, you gotta get in a race car. We ain't seen anybody can drive, you know, run like that. Got accolades for that. And so we're looking at this and I get a call out of nowhere from a guy that's a, uh, editor in chief of Car and Driver magazine. And uh, he says, I understand that you're looking at getting in professional racing. He said, I've been following your career and uh, watching you, and just to let you know, you need to look at stock cars because the rest of these things are on all these other series are on life support. They're barely, barely making it, and NASCAR's going through the roof. That's going to be your career. I said, well, I don't know anything about going in circles. I don't never <laughs> drove on an oval track in my life or anything. I said, well, you need to go check this out. If you will make up, make some arrangements, somebody will show you around the track and introduce you to what's going on off this. So sure enough, it was Daryl Derringer who was a uh, retired driver, picked me up to the track, I mean, at the airport. And, Took me to an event, showed me, took me first to Charlotte and showed me around the Charlotte Speedway, and then we went to Martinsville for the race that weekend. And man, it was unreal the amount of publicity. And I mean, we're 50 miles away from the track, and you're seeing all kind of banners and everything. You know, it's just on fire. And uh, get there and watch the race, and get her introduced to a lot of people. And got to be in the in the press box to watch the race up there. And, uh, I'm sitting there watching this race and I'm looking at these guys going down and running around a racetrack and I'm thinking, man, it doesn't look like there's, but a few of those guys really know what they're doing. And uh, and uh, Daryl told me, he said, I think you're gonna find this a little harder than it looks. <laughs> 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 and I said, is that right? I don't know, I just don't know about going in circles you know, and doing all this. And he said, well, if we get you a, situation where you can test one of these things you want to go do that I said, yeah i think that's probably going to be the thing i mean obviously it's healthy way healthier than the other stuff and I went and talked to ricky rudd i raced go-kart against ricky one time and, uh, you know just get an idea or something from him and he kind of gave me a little encouragement so anyway we get us a test set up and uh we'll go to rockingham in october on the bare grease, we're slicker and snot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, long story short, I crashed the car, tore it all to pieces, destroyed the thing, and uh, decided, yeah, this is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> uh, and I was kind of looking for a challenge anyway when I left the carts thing. I wanted to go someplace where I probably, you know, you couldn't. I was expected to win all the go kart races I went to. <laughs> but I want to go someplace where I didn't have that toe and that pull on me and everything. And uh, so I said, okay, I think I've found the challenge because the odds of me being able to be successful in this are probably slim and none. But we'll just you know, be fun to go do it. That's be the challenge. So uh, 
Daryl says, "Well, I think we better get our better, better get our own car and uh, <laughs> just get a couple of people working for it." Because uh, uh, so, <laughs> next thing I know, he's bought this car from a guy in Chicago, and I'm thinking, "Hold on here, what is it? Chicago, this NASCAR Southeast? What what's going on?" And uh, it looked rough. It was it was rough, and. Uh, so we tried to take it to, uh, we did take it to the last race at Ontario Motor Speedway and went out there and missed the race, didn't qualify. So we left there, Daryl said, well, we're already all, we've driven all the way to California. There's a Winston West race next weekend in Phoenix. Let's go to, we'll go over there and run. And uh, so I guess I got to back up and really tell all of it. I hate to tell all of this stuff on myself, but after the test at Rockingham, crashed that car. The same people said, well, we're running a race in Atlanta, I think a couple of weeks or something later. And I said, you want to drive down there? I said, well, yeah, I'll, let's go try that. So I went down there and uh, long story short, I crashed the car again, qualifying, crashed this song again. But you gotta tell them why, though, because that's the best part of the whole story, <laughs> right? I, You're I out there in practice, look, look. <laughs> practicing not, pretty well, right? I'm not not bad in practice. I'm practicing pretty good. I'm gonna like maybe halfway up the chart, you know, on the, on the speeds, and I'm standing on top of the truck watching the guys qualifying. And Buddy Baker had been one of the fastest cars all day, and I saw Buddy go off into turn one, and he didn't lift the throttle. You know, I'm listening. He didn't lift the throttle till he was about halfway through between one and two. And I said, well, dang, no wonder, no wonder I'm not the fastest car. I'd be lifting way early. So when I got out there to qualify, I drove that thing off in the corner and it's spinning out before I ever, yeah. <laughs> before I ever lifted. <laughs> Spin that thing around and don't hit anything. Like a fool, I turn around and drive back towards the start finish line, do a 180 to get a running start because I'm still going to qualify for this race sail that thing off into three and four didn't know about interliners and all this kind of stuff i had cut a tire down doing all that spinning i wrecked oh. again <laughs> big big wreck so uh now i've been in the car twice and i've crashed two of them tore them tore them all to pieces now we bought this car so we go out there and we missed the race didn't wreck missed the race go to phoenix the next weekend and run a Winston West race. I'm running along there about halfway through the race, I guess it was. And uh, they tell me on the radio, okay, you're going to pit here in two laps. So get ready, you know, kind of get your head straight. And, and so, okay, I find two laps come along. I start to come down pit road. I said, no, 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 stay out, stay out. Don't come down until the same. I said, what, what, what's the matter? What's going on? He said, the guy that owns the car didn't buy any gas because he didn't think you'd last this long. <laughs> <laughs> so he had, had to go get some gas. You know, and I, I think I finished fifteenth in the race. So we come home after that, and uh, Daryl finds out the car was built originally by Harry Hyde. Harry had built the car originally, and so he called up Harry and asked Harry, said Harry. Any chance you can help us get this car cleaned up before we go to Daytona? It's going to be our next race. We're going to try to go to Daytona. And uh, Harry said, you know, it just, just so happens that I got all of our Daytona stuff completely done and ready to load on the truck. And we do have some time on hands. Bring it on over here and we'll check it out. Well, next time I saw that son, gun, it looked like a brand new car. And they'd gone through the motors and everything. And uh, so they told us we couldn't run the Daytona 500, but we had we could run the ARCA race because of my past experience. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we go down there and uh, run that race. I've got a big old Monte Carlo. Most of them got old Oldsmobiles with Speedway cars and stuff like that. Qualified fifth and got to the lead pretty quick and led all the race pretty much the rest of the race had everybody lap down except one car and uh, he was the past champion but uh, he could just hold on to him and he couldn't 
couldn't race with me really. Get down to the end of the race and just a few laps to go, I had a big crash, big crash. This car scattered all over the tribal area there, whatever. I take the yellow and white flag, leading the race. I come back around to get the checkered flag and they've already sent my crew to a victory circle. And when I get to about the entrance of Pitt Road, I look up and see the flagman waving a green and green flag. What the? I step on the throttle, there's nothing I can do because I've run through some trash and cut a tire down. So I was on, had, had a rear tire on, down on the interliner. The other guy psh, wasn't racing. So that's <coughs> the only time you're ever going to see a, a race end on a green flag when you got the yellow and white if you use ever. The, yeah, yeah. The, the, the commentators on the radio and the, whatever, I got got a recording of Dick Brooks says, Ooh, we somebody's going to be really hot down there at the <laughs> speed crew. Cause I've seen a lot of racing, but I've never seen anything like that before. Wow. Uh, so that was my introduction to stock car racing, pretty much. And, uh, that was the beginning, and uh, and we just kept on plugging. <laughs> Got here, <laughs> kept on plugging. Did and, you uh, love it right away, or did it take time for you to like realize that you really well, enjoyed the it? The challenge is unreal. You know, I'm sitting there driving something that's flopping all around and moving and whatever, and I was used to a cart that's just rigid and quick steering. And everything is just real positive. So just learning the car, and I didn't know anything about the chassis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm just driving whatever these had two or three guys there working for us, whatever they put under it. I was just trying my best to drive it as hard as I could. And a lot of the times, most of the time, it wasn't driving that great, you know. And I didn't know what good would be. In the karting, you could go buy the nicest, best model, whatever it was, put a good engine on it, and, and the rest is up to you, dude. Yeah. You know, because everybody's got pretty much the same stuff. They got yeah. no suspension. It's yeah, just no fixed. suspension, and everything's pretty much the same. There's a little minor tweaks and stuff you can do, but most of it's a driver. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I was thinking, man, I'm, I'm struggling here with this driving part, and uh, thought it was mostly on me. And then as I got to, you know, you go to a track and find get lucky and get a pretty good setup under the car and it drive pretty decent and you know i, I think in my rookie year i don't know darlington i think i finished eighth the first time i went down there never seen the place before and uh had a great run for rookie and what we had we were you know had several good runs that year uh, is that what started your love of darlington do what is that what started you liking darlington so much yeah, it really was. The the best thing was Daryl, my, my coach there, my, my old, old driver coach, he said, I will not take you to this place without a test because it will eat your lunch. It eats everybody's lunch. And so we went down. That was the only time I can remember we ever tested anywhere other than Charlotte when they had an open test. But we went down there, and when he drove me across off the you come off the highway used to back then what used to be turn one you'd go across the track right there the entrance way and when he drove across there and i looked up down the straightaway i said you got to be kidding me <laughs> that thing looked i mean the track from from pit wall to pit wall is wide but you could see that the racing surface was really narrow <laughs> yeah. i thought you got to be kidding he said no i'm not kidding this place that's why i brought you down here you you got to get used to it so we tested and evidently came up with a pretty good setup and the car drove pretty good and i ran ran good came back and uh, ran the race and did really well the uh, uh funny part too was uh, daryl i mean he was trying really looking after me my coach so early on the first races we went to he'd get one of the veteran drivers to take me out in a passenger car and run me around a racetrack and give me some pointers and tips. And Benny Parsons got to be my regular guy. Benny liked me and uh, we got along good. And so he would take me, show me everywhere and everything. 
And I beat him at Darlington, and he said, you're on your own now, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you're on your own now. <laughs> Well, that's, that's, not, that's <laughs> fair, right? It's a fair deal. It's a fair deal. <laughs> you know, we're good. But uh, so that's that's kind of where all this started, and we, you know, we ran ran that car uh, that first year in '80, and uh, then the next year we, we downsized the cars. We had to shrink the cars and went through a whole bunch of crazy stuff on that. And uh, that's leaving at Talladega. But, uh, we a lot of strange stuff happened. Leading that race at Talladega, and the guy that built the engine in it lived on a gravel road in Mississippi. Hmm. Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown. He built about half the engines that season for me. And that other car, if you saw back there, had a seven on it on the wall, Sanyo. There was another guy that owned that car and he had some engine and stuff, but he couldn't afford to race anymore. And he said, just take this stuff and run it. And uh, so I ran his stuff some of the races and then ran ours the other other races in 71. We always limited schedule. We couldn't run all the, all the races, but had several uh, real close ones, real close ones. And that was not under caution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was. We had a really strong car that day. A really strong car. So the whole purpose of this extra channel is it's somewhere to put the things that don't necessarily make it to the main video. Like the main video was just about the the shop history and that kind of stuff. Where there's a handful of these sub stories that are 15, 20 minutes long. They are too good. For nobody to see but if I put them in the main video it would um, be too off topic for that particular video topic which is already a really long video so we'll put those over here and you guys get to hear everything if you're dedicated you, you like, gotta be careful with what you post in regards to how it makes the systems at play that choose what videos get recommended and how often to keep that happy if you you know put out less polished things or shorter things that you know it kind of screws up the the momentum in the one specific direction that may be acquired from posting more complete polished stuff back to back to back I don't know if that makes any sense but this is the place for the unpolished nonsense where what we post is not critical but is still necessary to be seen so we hope you're subscribed we got a couple more of these stories from lake speed and we're going to have more coming up we'll have more of uh of our own stories kind of stuff we're doing in the shop you know funny stuff interesting stuff i don't know whatever whatever you want to see it'll probably be here we're glad you're here <laughs>